Yo, yo, what is up guys? Welcome back to another F1 2021 video, career mode. My team, it's back, episode number 66 for the British Grand Prix, or as I like to call it, the cursed Grand Prix of career mode. Absolutely hate this place. Definitely nothing to do with my success rate, my performance around here. Definitely has nothing to do with that. But uh, regardless, welcome back guys to another video. Um, if you haven't subscribed already, do it now. We are 10,000 subs away from 700k. We are so, so close now and hopefully with F122 around the corner, hopefully we can get there. Anyway, um, yeah, Silverstone. This is the last time, hopefully for a while, that um, this this track won't feel too small for the cars. I'm hoping that with the new F122 cars, it becomes a bit more of a, I don't know, a bit more of a circuit actually, not so much of an oval circuit like it has been on F1 2021. The cars are just too fast and you just go flat out, flat out around most of the corners uh, in the current era. So I'm looking forward to uh, what that dynamic is going to be like with the new game. And hopefully the AI aren't broken, uh, more importantly. Anyway, here we are for this race. And, um, well, we have a bit of a dilemma at the team. We uh, have lost uh, some uh, equipment. And, uh, well, the cheap solution is, is not viable for us because... We don't have sufficient resource points to get away with it. We did take the L uh, an episode or two ago, uh, but now it's not letting me cheat and give up resource points I don't have. So, um, guess we're throwing away 100k. Love that for me. Thanks. I appreciate you taking the time to help out. All right, let's get into the weekend now. And uh, nothing really to do in terms of... Um, R&D, we have done all the performance stuff, so from a performance standpoint, we have a maxed out car. The only things we have to do now are reliability, and we're just tying up those final bits of things now. I think an energy store and a gearbox potentially is all that really remains now uh, before this car is truly maxed out. So no real worries now for us in terms of doing too much running in Friday practice. Um, the focus now is just on extracting the most performance I can out of myself uh, and the setup as we head into a Grand Prix weekend. But here's practice anyway. Um, I've been bouncing between this game and F1 22 a lot, and this is a very tough track to get used to. This is my first moments like on the game again. Really aggressive, really responsive rear end. The, the rear end is also very light, so it's it's very very easy to to spin out as you guys. So going from default setups on 22 cars to season five cars with everything amped up to the max, the difference couldn't be any more opposite. But we managed to traverse the opening sessions without getting cancelled from Formula One. Here's qualifying now. Let's hope I can string a lap together. Anyway, uh, here we are for qualifying, and um, I should have my eye in a little bit better for this session. Um, P10 to start the account. Not far away from our teammate Daniel Ricciardo, and that's not a bad effort considering this is, you know, one of the stronger tracks for the AI. Um, easily making it through to the next session. Uh, only three tenths clear of the person in the cutoff point, but then from P16 to P15, there's a gigantic gap between those two. Uh, an aborted lap there from lap one. Had to go back to the pits, come out again. Uh, now for our final run with one minute to go on a brand new set of soft compound tires. 123.2 is the target to beat so far. And we're in the drop zone right now. We need a top 10 placing. We haven't done too well in the past with our qualifying efforts, especially this season. It's been very difficult to, to match it with these guys. Their one lap pace is absolutely ridiculous. And that's been evidence in... Uh, how much ERS and how powerful their ERS has been um, over these uh, short bursts of speed. But um, it's it's coupled with uh, high speed corners, which the AI can carry even more speed than the player and what is physically possible sometimes. But 1 minute 21.8 for Lando Norris there. That's uh, pretty speedy, it must be said. Tyres are just about on the limit there in terms of 
uh, overheating. We don't want them to get any hotter than what they are through the last couple of corners now. We can make up a little bit of speed. We're, our low speed rotation and grip is actually pretty good compared to the AI. Across the line, 710 improvement, and it's not good enough to get ourselves into Q3. To be honest, I wasn't expecting Q3, but I was... Uh, <laughs> I was expecting not to be in P Q. Oh my god. Should I just give up? I was expecting not to be in Q3. What I wasn't expecting was my teammate Daniel Ricciardo to be down there with me in 13th place. Remember, we have the best car on paper. And we're 12th and 13th on the grid for the British Grand Prix. 7 tenths off the pace. That is not the kind of performance you want to be expecting from the defending champion. Yeah, not quite good enough. The race is still to come. We are always faster in the race. Um, I'm not worried about myself getting through, but Daniel is going to have a tough time overtaking cars being that far back. We need the points for the constructors. Let's do this. Tough luck there. It's not quite where we'd want to be on the grid, but chin up, it's not the end of the world. Great Britain then, one of only two countries to have held a Grand Prix in every single year of the Formula One World Championship. And the circuit extends that record further for today's Grand Prix. Can we begin by having a chat about Charles Leclerc? There's a new gearbox in the back of that car, which means a grid penalty and hopefully some excitement as they make their way through the field. Well, at the end of the day, it's always better to take some pain now than parking it up halfway through the Grand Prix. Let's just hope they can put that new gearbox to good use and get the results they're looking for. After the points finish last race, let's aim to keep the momentum going. Well, we got a win last time out, but uh, I'm not too sure momentum is on our side. we almost starting again from scratch. It, it really has been annoying, I guess, from my end, and you guys are quite frustrated about it too, but having to chop and change between this game and, and the last game, um, I would have ideally liked to have done this series. I'll get it done uh, a little earlier than this, but... This is the way the cookie crumbles, but here we go. Ready for a British Grand Prix, which I'm not too optimistic about, but if there's uh, any luck that's going to go our way, it needs to be here. Five red lights, and we are underway for the British Grand Prix. Looks like an okay start, drawing alongside the Alpine as we head down into turn one. Stroll is just going to edge us, as is our teammate, actually, who uh, out-qualified... No, no, not out-qualified. We out-qualified him, but he out-dragged us into turn one. Crucially though, we're going to go around his outside at uh, this very slow left-hander. Like I said, our, our low speed rotation is actually pretty good. It's the high speed that we seem to be struggling uh, with up against the AI. So it's it's no surprise that they're really fast at, uh, well, their strongest track. So we'll uh, see if we can fight back. I've opted to start on the soft compound tires here because of the AI's pace, and I don't want to start on the medium and get left for dead. We need to stay in the slipstream, in the DRS of the race leaders. We need to cling on to their pace, because I don't think I have the pace to, to, to close in with these guys and, and make that pace on my own without slipstream. Slipstream is so crucial here. This is like the Indy 500 of F1. This track is just, like, you can just go flat out through most corners. There's very little braking required. It's, it's actually a little bit frustrating in that sense, especially since the AI gained so much time in that area of the track. And Gassi and Ticktum going a little bit side by side! Oh, we're out! All right. Engine off, engine off. The curse of Silverstone continues and we are out of the Grand Prix before it's all even really begun for us. Not even a single racing lap completed in this race. And that is game over, potentially game over for the championship as well. We were leading by approximately 18 points heading into this race. And Max Verstappen has just got a free kick in this race. I believe he's leading the Grand Prix at this stage and we are now out, walking back to the garage for an early shower. It's day done. Red Bull put up an outstanding fight for the front position today and it's great to see it paid off for them. They do so much for the sport that you can't help but be delighted by today's race win. Well, that's a kick in the teeth. <laughs> Verstappen gets the win. Red Bull make it a 1-2. And uh, they are probably going to shoot to top of the constructors as well. 
But that is not what we want to see. Uh, before you guys panic, we're not going to have about 20 minutes of uh, black screen. We are actually going to do another race in this episode. So stay tuned for that. But last place, George Russell and Carlos Sainz, also DNF. No points for us today. Where is our teammate Daniel Ricciardo in all of this? Hopefully he's got some good points for the team. It's P7. So it's an absolute stinker for Marduk Motorsport. And actually, that's actually not a bad recovery for Ricardo. For an AI to make up that many positions at a track where it's actually really difficult to overtake. Bravo. But for us, that's a shocker. Trail by 10 points. On to Spa. This race has cost you first place in the championship. Do you think you have what it takes to get it back? Nope, that's it. Championship over. Appreciate your time. Right, uh, rivalry also gets a big fat kick in the teeth as well. <laughs> Good way to start that one, which we uh, we teed that up, that rivalry up just before Silverstone. So that was uh, great timing for us. We're going to do an ultimate turbo durability upgrade. Um, and then we can do this gearbox failure analysis. We can get a big old discount on that. And I believe that is the final upgrade. That's the final piece in the puzzle to go on this car and then we're done. In terms of things that I can actually control. Uh, there are a couple of... Oh! Lewis Hamilton has retired, by the way! Lewis Hamilton has announced his retirement after the British Grand Prix. This will be his last season in Formula 1 for this game. Not that it means much. See you in about two weeks, Lewis, where you'll be back in the sport. Fighting for P5s, maybe. <laughs> yes, uh, we're going on to the Belgian Grand Prix now. And uh, this is also a very strong track for the AI. So, again, it's going to be tough. Right, let's not bin ourselves in this Grand Prix. I'm still a little bit gutted about that. That was uh, easily avoidable, that crash. We just got too close and didn't react in time. But uh, Q1, P12, very similar form to uh, Silverstone, I believe. Maybe a little bit more potential here as I maybe underdid myself in the build-up to this race. I didn't actually do any laps in practice because uh, I was already dialed into the game a little bit. But um, yeah, we're moving into qualifying now. And I actually took a very interesting line there. I took a lot of curb, which I don't normally do at that corner. And I think it's actually benefited me quite a lot as we're up by eight tenths. Make that a second as we cross the line. Where do we end up? It is P6 on the grid provisionally in Q2. So we are going to make it through to the final part of qualifying. And this is for the first time in quite a while. So the, the Spa form at least it seems is pretty good our, our we've got a low drag setup which is definitely giving us free lap time on the straights in sector one and three but we're just about holding on through the middle sector where the AI again are very very strong I expect to be stronger in the race actually with this low drag setup it'll be very hard for the AI to really compete and actually overtake me so if we get a good uh, qualifying position for this race then I'd be very happy with that 138.2 is provisional pole at the moment for Lando Norris and uh, that's actually quite a bit slower than the times we saw in Q2. I was in the 37s. 37.7, I think I did. So if I can repeat what I did in Q2, then we're on target for pole position. But that's barring anyone else improving. If, if people improve, then uh, I think it might be close. We'll have to wait and see. People are crossing the line now to end their laps. Lando does a 37.7. So matches what I did in Q2. So all I need to do is do something in the ballpark of what I did in Q2 with an even faster track now. We might be half a chance of getting up there in the mix. But this is a very hard track to get a lap in. It's a very long lap at that. 37.5 for Esteban Ocon in the Red Bull. And that is the marker being set by the AI. I, people can set another lap, but I'm not sure the AI are really fueled up and have enough ERS battery to, to do two laps in a row. The tyres are on the limit in terms of temperatures. So I think it might be tricky for those guys to pull something out of the hat. But here's our run. We're seven tenths up on Lance Stroll to the middle sector split. And remember, 
that there's not much of a difference between these guys inside the top 10 and then the absolute pace setters at the front of the grid. So I think we're on target here for a very, very good lap. Into the final chicane, the bus stop. Nice rotation through there. Short shift to third. A little bit of wheel spin as we get up into fourth and fifth gear across the line. Excellent lap. We're really pleased. Where is it though? Where are we on the grid? It is pole position for the Belgian Grand Prix. And that is a response after the disappointment of Silverstone. What a way to start the weekend. Hopefully, we can fight back with a win. You didn't practice much this weekend. Are you saving your car for the race? Absolutely not. As we all know, practice is for wimps. We're in Belgium once again for today's round of the Formula One World Championship. It's a race the great Ayrton Senna won six times and in 2019 Charles Leclerc became the first driver to take their maiden win here since Michael Schumacher in 1992. It's time to take a look at our starting grid for today's race. Benjamin lines up on pole position. Let's head down to the track. Well, thank you for that glowing introduction, Crofty. But uh, since you didn't see the grid rundown, you will not really know that Max Verstappen qualified in P11. Unless you're paying attention earlier. But he's qualified P11. He's on strategic pole position for this race. And that is the uh, the turnaround of luck that I needed after Silverstone. So we're leading from the front. Sanya Ricardo's in P5. This could be a good race for us, but we need to convert. Five red lights and we are underway for the second half of this season pretty good launch there we've got the uh, the red bull of esteban ocon trying to do max verstappen's work but i've run wide out of the exit of turn one and i had to avoid that sausage curve because we are running on simulation damage and that would have ko'd the floor from the first corner and we can ill afford to have that let's just give up the lead now and hopefully retake it on this straight with overtake and standard mixture Man, I could really do it with some rich mixture right now, but I'm not going to get it. Ocon retains the lead of the Grand Prix for now. Here's uh, the replay of what's going on back there. You can see uh, Lando Norris trying to go the inside of my teammate, Daniel Ricciardo. And it looks like Norris doesn't have the drive of Ricciardo in a straight line to get that position. Great start for Daniel. Gained two places and is now on the podium in this Belgian Grand Prix. So that is exactly what we want to see. What we don't want to see, though, is Ocon stretching away in the lead. It looks like he's got the pace to back up that uh, position that he's in at the moment. I just can't stay with him. I'm understeering like a pig around here. I've got no... I've got no downforce. I've, I've got no front end. And to make matters worse, even though we're not going through the corners as fast as the AI, the tires are overheating. As you can see there on the left-hand side, it's particularly the rear end that's uh, that's struggling. We're just, yep, yeah, we it's just horrific, isn't it? it? Theoretically, if you're running less downforce, there's less energy going through the tires in the corners, so the tires should be cooler, and the AI should be the ones who are struggling for tire temps because they are pulling some superhuman g-forces through these high-speed corners this that left-hander at Puon particularly is the strongest corner for the AI I don't know how they're able to carry that much speed but I'll stop complaining now we're just gonna get on with it Ocon is already gone in this race and that's really unfortunate because we've thrown away the race lead at turn one who says you can't win a race on the first corner well looks like Ocon has at this stage because if we would have led after lap one, I think we probably would have kept the position because we've got Ricardo right behind us in the same machinery, but he's not able to get anywhere close in the actual overtaking zones of the circuit. Our straight line speed is so supreme that Ricardo can't even get close in sectors one and three. Yeah, sure, he's a, he's a little bit close in sector two, but he's got dirty air to contend with as well, which uh, is, is kind of keeping him at bay and so too with the likes of Norris and Hamilton. So... We're doing okay at this stage, but our tyres are dropping off now towards the end of this stint. Uh, we, we, we bled a lot of time in the first two laps to Ocon. Then it kind of stabilised the gap a little bit, and now it's um, now it's starting to blow out again. So let's hope on the medium compound tyres we've got a little bit more pace to 
um, really fight. And if we're really fast, maybe claw back that lead to Ocon. We can only hope now that he goes on the hard compound tires. The AI do tend to do that sometimes. And that, that margin might be close enough that we can charge him down. And he's actually going on to medium compound tires. So there goes that plan. Maybe if he encounters traffic, then we'll have a chance. Ricardo, there you go. Stupid strategy on the hard compound tires. Of course, it's my teammate with the worst strategies in the field. And, yep, he's been undercut by Lando Norris as well to make matters even worse. Oh, that's Ocon! Ocon in the lead of the Grand Prix. Our net leader is out of this race with an engine failure. That is the luck. That's I have needed. I've had absolutely no luck in Silverstone, but it's all coming up Millhouse in Silverstone as L Lando gets overtaken by my teammate. So it's a Marduk Motorsport 1-2 in this Belgian Grand Prix. Permitted, we can get a clean pit stop here. We're doing the overcut here. Oh, terrible run into the pit lane there, but no safety car, no VSC. We are into the pit lane for a set of medium compound tyres. And... Uh, Provided this all goes smoothly, it's going to be a Marduk Motorsport 1-2 with Verstappen actually very close behind on the mediums. He's made a huge ground uh, at the start of this race, so he might well be a factor towards the end of this race. But there out goes my teammates. Not quite close enough to have a strike at us. We have a one-second lead at this stage, and that's all we can really ask for. Maybe we should actually slow down a little bit and bring Ricardo back into DRS because... He's going to be under pressure from... Well, he's already under pressure from Norris. Three-tenths is the, the gap between those two. But it's Verstappen. It is Verstappen we've got to think about in this race. He's on medium compound tyres. Fresher tyres than those around him. In a faster car than those around him. Got a bit unlucky in qualifying. But he's certainly got the race pace to match it. And this actually helps our championship. So we're going to do a little bit of fuel burn there, actually, to bring the gap down. Ricardo is now in the DRS. And if we can create this DRS train, the Verstappen has less of a chance to overtake these guys. So let's see if this works. DRS, active for our teammates. And that is the little safety net, that extra little helping hand my teammate needs <laughs> in this race to stay ahead of that Red Bull. It's not Norris I'm really concerned about because I believe it's only a matter of time before Verstappen gets Norris. And uh, that corner right there is actually keeping me honest. That was a run through Puon, which was fine for me, but the difference was I didn't press overtake on exit, whereas Ricardo did. And look at how much ground he made up on the slower tire. The AI are nuts through there. And they, their deployment is weird as well. Ricardo's not deploying ERS on this straight. He, he did one tiny little burst, but the majority of it is out of high speed corners and medium speed corners in the middle sector. It's really weird. Here comes Verstappen on the inside of Norris. Not quite making it work and Norris is all out of shape. His rhythm has well and truly been rattled in this race. Caution. Oh, that's another uh, failure. And this time for Pierre Gasly in the Alpine. Is there going to be a safety car from that? I guess we'll have to wait and see for a few moments, but it looks like that is not the case. I probably... Would I have wanted a safety car? Probably. I don't think I would have minded. Here comes uh, Verstappen up the inside of Norris now. This is for the podium. He goes around the outside, turns to the inside for the next right-hander, and the Red Bull driver is through for P3 in this Belgian Grand Prix. Can Lando fight back in that McLaren? He's probably got one more chance to do so. Uh, with the next DRS zone coming up. Once Verstappen gets in the DRS of my teammate, it's game over. For Norris, anyway. Uh, unless Verstappen's tyres go off. In which case, if they go off for Verstappen, they're most certainly going to go off for me. As um, I'm, not, well, I'm not amazing at uh, tyre conservation. I do probably lock up a little bit more often than what I really should. And that in turn creates a bit of understeer with the front tyres. An issue which I've actually been suffering with a little bit this weekend. Trying to rotate the car at turn one, as you saw lap one, struggled. Uh, but some, some moments also in qualifying really caught me out. I couldn't rotate the car through the last corner and, and the first corner as well. So that was not great. But this is my fastest lap of the race so far. We cross the line and we actually go purple to the third sector. And we're only two tenths shy of the fastest lap overall in the race. Which was set by... 
Esteban Ocon is not in this race anymore. So I have got an idea here, guys. I am actually going to do something which you guys probably would not agree with. We are going to let Ricardo go. We are going to give the lead of the race to our teammate, Daniel Ricardo, to stop Max Verstappen going through. There he goes, Hamilton. Ha who's Hamilton? <laughs> Ricardo is into the lead of the Grand Prix. Verstappen. <laughs> I'm losing the plot here, guys. Verstappen demoted, stays down in P3, and Ricardo is now in the lead of this race. Will he stay there, though? Odds on he won't. Because I'm going to snap that lead back straight from him in what is hopefully going to be a 200 IQ play to get the fastest up of the race. Here we go. DRS overtake in the slipstream of our teammate. Let's force him to go defensive so we can take the racing line into the middle sector round the outside of Daniel Ricciardo. And that is for the lead of the Grand Prix once again. We need that DRS. We need those extra couple of tenths to try and get the fastest up of the Grand Prix and extra points in this championship because Max Verstappen... Well, he's got the edge on us currently at this stage. The gap in the championship is 10 points. And if things finish as they are, it's going to be level on points heading into the next race. If we can get this faster side, we'll lead by one point over Max Verstappen. Every point is critical. But I've got to get this lap in. This is our one and only chance, I reckon, of getting the faster lap. Because in the last few laps, the tyres will be past their best. And I think maybe we... Maybe we've left it a little bit too late, but we're going for it anyway with DRS overtake. And we're going to use all the battery down this back straight and into Blanchimont. I normally save a little bit of DRS for the run up to the line, but I'm going to deploy all the battery now in the hopes of really making up some time in the third sector. Second is the difference between ourselves and our teammates into the final chicane. Nice rotation. A little bit of wheel spin, though. Up to the line. Can we get the fastest lap? Yes, we can. Yes. We can. Four and a half tenths improvement over our previous best. And that was a decision worth taking as we have an intentional bad run out of turn one again. And Ricardo is back in the DRS once again. We are managing this race. We're not doing anything illegal. We're not doing anything cheeky. I mean, we did block off Verstappen a little bit uh, in that orchestrated move to get our teammate into P1. But, you know, we didn't we didn't cut him off the circuit. We, we we gave him a squeeze, a gentle squeeze, and he backed out. I think that was on the limit, but just about fair. So, uh, from here, we're just managing the gap. You can see that this is a massive DRS train. We are basically just fighting fighting for life at this point. We've got the fastest up of the Grand Prix somehow. I don't really feel like we've got the fastest car. If, if Ricardo, Verstappen, Norris, Hamilton... So many people on the DRS train behind me. If they had the same opportunity that I have right now to be running in clear air, I think they'd all be faster than me. We are just about holding on with these tires, with this car, with the straight line speed, the low drag setup. It was a risk to go with this, but we we, we favoured having a better race car in, in fa uh, compared to having a better qualifying car. Somehow we got into pole position for qualifying. I think the AI bottled Q3 a little bit, to be honest, but... You know, we've been given this opportunity and we're running with it. As you can see, my teammate cuts up Verstappen, just like I did. Very, very proud of you, son. Ricardo is doing an amazing job of keeping that Red Bull driver behind for now, but a bit of a lock up into the final chicane. Verstappen has the inside for the final corner and it's going to be side by side as we head on to the last lap of this Belgian Grand Prix. Can my teammate hold on? He's got DRS. As does Max Verstappen, who's going to get DRS out of these two. Verstappen has to do the undercut to try and get a better exit out of turn one. And Ricardo is going to be under pressure here on this uh, first DRS straight. Oh, wow. Verstappen using all the overtake, but unable to get the position. So Ricardo holding on. Massive slide for me. And now I'm under pressure on this last lap. The tyres are starting to go off a little bit. We're running an aggressive setup with high uh, ant rear anti-roll bar, high suspension as well. So the rear end really is uh, put under pressure under a lot of load over the course of a Grand Prix. And towards the end here, the tyres are a little bit past their best. So just trying to hold on. You can see back end losses through Puon. The rear end is 
just overstepping a little bit. And every little correction, every little slide adds to the temperature of the rear tires. And that in turn has a snowball effect. It just creates even more slides for the rest of the race. So just a few more corners for us to hold on now using the rest of our uh, corner cutting tokens as we go up and overtake. Oh my word, that was a back end loss as Verstappen is trying to put pressure on us. Ricardo goes in the lead of the Grand Prix as well. Can we get the lead back off our teammate? It's side by side through the Blanchimon chicane for the last time. Side by side, who's going to come out on top? It looks like it's going to be us as we head into the final couple of corners. We have just about avoided disaster. And we are going to get a 1-2 at the Belgian Grand Prix. Absolutely fantastic. It's a brilliant result. Well done. Oh my word. It did not need to be that hard. But a win's a win. What a great race then, and what a magnificent victory here at the Belgium Grand Prix. So Anthony, what made the difference out there today? Well, I think it was clear what the main contributing factor out on the track was today, speed. I know it sounds like an obvious thing to say, Crofty, but fast cars win races, and we saw that today with our winner. Well, what a thrilling end to an incredible Grand Prix weekend. Our top three finishers should be incredibly happy with what they were able to achieve out there today. <laughs> Real talk, if I won a race in that fashion where I nearly died and took my teammate with me, I probably wouldn't be making as much of an ass out of myself as, as what my avatar is on the podium right there. But there we go. It is a 1-2 for the team. Quite rightly, Daniel Ricciardo standing up on the top step as well. Thank you very much for not challenging me too much. I mean, hard to say whether he was holding back for the majority of that race or whether he genuinely couldn't get close to overtake us. I mean, we had some scary moments there. One where we tried to orchestrate the fastest lap and then again that last lap with the tire. I don't know what was going on there. Maybe I was out of rhythm. Maybe I was a little bit nervous, but those slides just kept on snowballing and uh, it got to a point where I just couldn't couldn't stop it anymore that that last massive slide I, that could have easily wiped both of us out and Verstappen could have won that race that could have been a double DNF episode but thankfully it was not but in terms of a race there was literally only what on my end two overtakes in that race two overtakes and that is the most entertaining two overtake race I've ever seen it was very strategical. It, there was a lot going on behind the scenes, a lot going on that I had to think about over the course of the race. I thought the race was gone after the first stint. Ocon, very unfortunate retirement. We threw away the lead of the race from turn one. Who knows what would have happened if I would have been able to suppress him in that first stint. Maybe he would have been able to get ahead anyway. Hard to know. Really, really hard, hard to know. And also with Max Verstappen, he never really had a clear run at us either. He had a couple of goes at Ricardo, couldn't get past him. But a 1v1 showdown between myself and Ocon, or myself and Verstappen, would have been very interesting. <laughs> Thankfully, we didn't have to find out because that would have been terrifying. Thank you guys so much for watching. What a belter of an episode. That was, uh, that's a real seesaw, uh, a real roller coaster of emotions. The absolute highs of winning that race, and then the lows of Silverstone. Um, this, this, <laughs> the lead of the championship has, has swapped hands a couple of times in this episode and it's been absolutely manic. Only a handful of races to go now in this season. I believe probably six, seven races now until we are at the end of this season and at the end of this career mode journey for F1 2021. But thankfully, we don't have to wait long to... See what happens on the next game. That was the decisive move. That was an incredible moment to uh, get that overtake on our teammates and get the fastest lap. Who knows? At the end of the season, that one point could be everything. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed by now, just what are you doing? What are you doing? Press the button. It takes two seconds and it's job done. Either way, if you're not subscribed, I appreciate you regardless. Thank you for watching. See you guys very soon for F122.